And uh, joining us now uh, is Derek Mackay, who is the Transport Minister for the Scottish National Party. Uh, Mr Mackay, thank you for being with us. You heard there uh, what Jim Murphy was saying. Just to be accurate with this, are you proposing to vote for opting out of uh, the British welfare system and the British pension system? Well, I think what we're actually seeing is the Labour Party, in terms of the polls, is going from meltdown to muddle. They've taken the report and misrepresented it. And in terms of the IFS study, it also spoke about the choices Scotland would have. If we had economic levers, we'd be able to make different decisions. And the rate of progress in terms of devolution and the transfer of powers to Scotland has been particularly slow. To suggest it will have full fiscal autonomy in a financial year that's already begun is preposterous. The only cuts that will be faced upon Scotland right now are the cuts that the Labour Party, yeah, okay, the okay, Tories but, and the Liberals have second. all voted for no, in the SNP? I, I appreciate defense. that, but if you could just answer my question. If you did have full fiscal autonomy, do you accept what the IFS says, which is the consequence of that, is that Scotland would have less money for pensions, less money for its welfare state? It, well, I wouldn't accept that because the pension situation is quite different in Scotland as well. The IFS report is a piece of work gives us a snapshot of the finances in a moment in time, but it doesn't represent where Scotland would be in terms of this year or next year because all that would be a matter of political yeah. negotiation. See, it would take time say... to transfer further economic powers to Scotland. I thought you might say, well, we want more powers. We'd be prepared to face the consequences of that. Well, of course, we will pursue it. It won't come as any surprise to your viewers that the SNP will pursue maximum powers to come to Scotland. You know, Scotland's generated more yeah, per if, head in taxation for the rest of the United off. Kingdom per head of population for the last 30 odd years. And uh, no, people wouldn't be worse off because the more powers we have, the more we can grow the economy. And it's estimated by 2020 that the onshore revenues in Scotland will increase by some £15 billion. So you can take a report, as the IFS has done, a snapshot in time. But what we would negotiate with the UK government would be a transfer of more economic powers to Scotland to help us grow our economy because we have an alternative but to austerity. But there would be a transition period before you grow the economy where you might be short of cash of for course, your welfare exactly. state. It, it, well, we wouldn't be short of cash because in terms of the current context, we would be within the United Kingdom and the United Kingdom has a huge deficit. Anyway, most developed countries well, have a deficit at this point in time. We're talking about when you Scotland, become autonomous. Scotland, in that sense, would be the same. Well, we're not actually going to leave the United Kingdom as a consequence of the Westminster election. That's not what the Westminster well, election is about. is what we were Scotland. talking about, though. The more MPs we have, the, the stronger voice we would have. And we will acquire as many powers as we can get for Scotland to grow our economy and to address what is an academic gap. But that wouldn't be the starting position for Scotland. You know, the Labour Party has made a muddle. They've said we would be in uh, difficulty in year one. We're already in to 15-16 financial year. So actually, Scotland's in a strong economic position. We raise more in taxation per head of population than the rest of the United Kingdom, and we've done so for a number of years. And the forecasts are, I'm sure the oil price it will go up, but that aside, onshore revenues will increase by some £15 billion yeah. by 2020. Okay, okay. So Scotland's in a strong financial position. But yes, we want more powers to, yeah. to address the gap that has been identified, but uh, that's not the position we'll inherit. And that I, would be a matter of process, transition, negotiation and address through time. Well, can I just ask you, given this uh, vehement disagreement you have with Scottish Labour, how Nicola Sturgeon can possibly propose to work with a Labour-only government in Westminster? Because we'll work with a government on an issue-by-issue -issue basis to get the best deal for Scotland. That would with be the raison d'etre of the Conservative government. Well, we won't work with a Conservative government because we don't want a Conservative government. And so the you've got to work Scotland with a Labour government, government who you disagree with. But in terms... Well, there'll be things we disagree with on. For example, the renewal of Trident nuclear missiles at a cost of £100 billion. There will be issues we disagree on, but we'll take Scotland's case forward and work with that government to get the best progressive deal we can for Scotland. And incidentally, I think for the rest of the United Kingdom, in terms of progressive policies, as opposed to what we've seen from the Conservative Liberal Coalition. Mr Mackay, thank you very much indeed for joining us.